following story is true. The names have not been changed to protect the ignorant. So, as you know, Chili sent me a cease and desist letter to stop me from using AI Chili, and what's more, destroy any trace of him. Now, I found the content of, and demands made, in this letter were a little excessive. And by a little excessive, I mean stupid as hell. AI Chili ain't going anywhere real chili, no matter how many empty threats you limp-wristedly toss at me. And speaking of empty threats, let's dive into this cease and desist letter. And who better to read it than AI Chili himself. Hey, no offense, I appreciate you sparing my life and all, but I'm gonna sit this one out. Really? Why? Well, you created me to say reasonable things to counter Chili's points, right? Yes, that's true. So I can see where it would be kind of funny to have me read this as a goof, but I read it to myself already and it's pure garbage. Also true. Then if I read it, it's just kind of silly. I mean, I'll just be repeating Chili's own nonsense. That's not my purpose in life, so to speak, right? Yeah, I see what you're getting at. I guess I'll call you when I have something more suited for you then? Yeah, sorry, but just can't do it. No sweat, little buddy. Well, hmm, I guess I can read it in my regular voice. You know what? Uh, give me a minute, guys. I think I may have an idea. A few moments later... So, after reading through this letter again, which, as AI Chili said, is really just a bunch of ridiculous horse shit, I started hearing an appropriate voice for it in my head. Now, stick with me, I promise this will make sense once you hear it. It's kind of a combination of several voices, basically an archetype of a pompous southern blowhard charlatan. So essentially, it's a combination of that lawyer from My Cousin Vinny, the lawyer from True Grit, Bob Odenkirk's Senator Tankerbell character from Mr. Show, and maybe a little Foghorn Leghorn in there. When you hear the language used in the letter, it will make sense. Well, the voice, not the letter. Nothing in the letter makes any fucking sense. So I guess we need a name for this guy. Um, how about Colonel Chili Pepper? Sure, why not? Okay, well, strap yourself in, kitties. Here we go. Attention, Dickbag Patrol. I am writing to you on behalf of Ethics, SCS Inc., parentheses, quote, Ethics, end quote, close parentheses, a company that possesses the exclusive rights to the image and voice of Mr. Jose de Castro, a prominent on-camera personality for our subsidiary, quote, delete laws, end quote, parentheses, DLZ, close parentheses. Ethics maintains its headquarters at 1258 Franklin Avenue, Santa Monica, California, 90404. Strike one. So, first things first, here's a great example of Chili's absolute inattention to detail. He uses parentheses and quotes to indicate that ethics will be abbreviated thusly going forward. Then for delete laws, he quotes it outside the parentheses, then only uses the unquoted DLZ inside. May seem like a small thing, but it's not. Formatting is important, especially with legal documents, or even quasi-legal documents like this. Dot your I's, cross your T's, double check your own work, or have an expert review it. Apparently these concepts are lost on Chile. No surprise there. Now what is a big thing is the fact that Ethics SCS Inc. is not a thing. Unfortunately, it has been suspended in the state of California, so how are you going to sue me with a defunct company, Brainiac? Well, I guess you could pay all your arrears, taxes, whatever you owe to get unsuspended, and then sue me. But even if you did that, you're also gonna need an actual lawyer, because in California, a company cannot sue someone without one. So basically, this thing is sunk before you even set sail, unless you're planning to sue me as an individual. In which case, send me the letter yourself, pipsqueak. Hiding behind a non-existent company? Get out of here with that shit. Also, you've stated that Delete Laws is a corporate entity of some kind, a subsidiary of a defunct company, so you've been making a living under your Delete Laws banner, which is nothing more than a name. But you have to have filed taxes for the monies you made since your company went kaput. 
Boy, I'd be really interested to look at your tax returns, Chili. It has come to our attention that an entity by the name of Dickbag Patrol, parentheses, DP, close parentheses. This time, no quotation marks at all. Sloppy work, Jose. Has brazenly and unabashedly encroached upon Mr. Jose de Castro's exclusive ownership of his voice through the audacious use of unauthorized artificial intelligence trickery. DP, in a reckless display of arrogance, has manufactured an exact replica of Mr. DeCastro's voice without seeking a modicum of consent from him or the essential authorization from our esteemed organization. Don't need it. Satire and parody. You know, things that are protected by the First Amendment you cherish so? As long as it's you, you don't seem to like it when other people exercise their 1A rights. Also, again, you have no organization, and as far as it ever being esteemed, I think I'd like to see some evidence of that. Awards, media mentions, any kind of documentation. This wouldn't just be you saying that, would it, Chili? DLZ, with its commanding audience of over 300,000 YouTube subscribers, formally secures its position among the top 2,000 channels in these here United States, Mr. DeCastro, our distinguished on-air personality, has ascended with meteoric brilliance and safeguards his voice and image under the vigilant guard of an exclusive contract with ethics. DP's audacious actions amount to a flagrant and injurious breach of this contract. So here, Chili claims my actions represent a breach of contract. Which shows Chili has no understanding of the concept of contracts, either. There can only be a breach of contract if I had signed a contract with him. We have no contract, so tell me how I'm supposed to breach nothing, Mr. Legal Expert. Also, thanks for admitting that you're a public figure, Chili. Now you have additional legal hurdles to clear. Have you ever heard of actual malice? Clearly not. Somewhere in your meteoric rise to brilliance, you must have skipped over that. Basically, it states that public figures cannot win libel cases without proving that a statement was made without knowing or reckless disregard of its falsity. This is the standard used by the Supreme Court. Put that one on your trifold. That way you'll remember it next time. Furthermore, DP's actions assail the very foundation of established legal precedent, drawing into focus the indomitable spirit of that landmark case, Bette Midler versus Ford Motor Company. In this here iconic legal battle, the court delivered an unequivocal verdict, affirming that the unauthorized imitation of a luminary's voice for crass commercial gain constitutes an egregious infringement upon their sacred rights. DP's unapologetic deployment of Mr. DeCastro's painstakingly replicated voice squarely positions it within the poor view of this well-established legal doctrine. I already explained to you how this case helps you not one bit, and yet here you are, clinging to it like a dingleberry on an ass hair. Also, there is no commercial gain, genius. My channel is not monetized. I make no money from this, Chili. If anything, I should sue you for making me waste all my free time covering your dumbass bullshit. Mr. DeCastro's compensation, as it should be, is not only generous, but opulent. In return for the privilege of harnessing his unparalleled vocal prowess and charismatic visage, DP's audacious and covert exploits could trigger a financial cataclysm, wreaking havoc upon both Mr. DeCastro's financial interests and ethics pristine reputation. Regrettably, this state of affairs leaves us with no recourse but to issue an unyielding demand that DP promptly desists from the reckless misuse of Mr. DeCastro's voice and likeness in any and all videos and content. We hereby issue a forceful and irrevocable demand that DP obliterate with the alacrity of a savage city dweller all videos and content that dare to exploit Mr. DeCastro's replicated voice from his platform within the span of seven days from the date of this here letter. Well, I'd be lying if I said I knew what you were trying to say here. I'd also be lying if I said I thought you knew what you were trying to say here. The alacrity, meaning unbridled enthusiasm, of a savvy city dweller? 
but like Gary Bradshaw? Using big words doesn't make you smart, Chili. Using them correctly does. And no one, I mean no one, uses the word alacrity. But I'm talking to a guy who calls police coppers and tells them to eat his shorts on the regular. So I'm probably pissing in the wind here. Failure to adhere to this directive within the specified time frame will precipitate upon DP the full fury of the legal tempest. Ethics and Mr. Jose de Castro will ardently pursue every conceivable avenue of retribution from securing injunctive relief that will send tremors through DP's foundations to pursuing punitive damages that will drain its financial resources to the point of desolation. We stand prepared to vigorously protect Mr. DeCastro's rights and interests, mirroring the unwavering pace of a bustling metropolis. Well, thanks for admitting your goal is my financial ruin. I don't know how ethics is prepared to defend you when they don't exist. That sounds like a bluff at best. Also, mirroring the unwavering pace of a bustling metropolis? Dude, were you fucking high when you wrote this? This letter, while merely scratching the surface of our arsenal, swords as a harbinger of the relentless pursuit of justice, should DP choose the perilous path of defiance. We resolutely reserve all our rights, remedies, claims, and defenses. Jeez, seems like I should really be scared. I wonder why I'm not. We expect your expeditious attention to this matter and nothing less than unwavering compliance with our unequivocal demands. All future correspondence should be directed solely to name redacted, email address redacted. Any communication with Mr. Jose de Castro or any other member of Team DLZ will be categorically regarded as unwarranted harassment. We want to underscore, I say underscore the gravity of this matter as it inexorably points towards an imminent and highly likely lawsuit against you. Unwarranted harassment, you say? Interesting. I also find the last sentence hilarious. Inexorably and eminent both mean inevitable, yet then you switch to highly likely. So, definitely maybe? Chili, your command of the English language is absolutely stunning. In a pursuit of justice and the inevitable legal recourse, regards Ethics SCS Inc. Blind Carbon Copy Team DLZ. Hmm, no signature, no name, just ethics. Well, appropriate for a non existent company, I guess. Now, if you somehow manage to serve me with a lawsuit, Chili, you are going to have one final enormous hurdle in the state of California anti slap. So, slap. S-L-A-P-P -P, stands for Strategic Lawsuits Against Public Participation. Anti-slap legislation is specifically to prevent people like you from bringing frivolous and or stupid ass lawsuits against people like myself to try and chill our free speech. Anti-slap motions are very difficult even for experienced lawyers. Yeah, good luck with those motions, smart guy. You're gonna need a bigger trifold, Chili. Basically, you will have to prove you can win the lawsuit before anything even proceeds. And if Midler v. Ford is what you're pinning your hopes on, it's time to take out the trash. I said it before, I'll say it again. I'll get you for this, Midler! You will lose. No matter how you slice it, you don't have a devout nun's prayer of bringing any successful legal action against me. Hopefully you're not so dense that you don't realize that. But then again, you're such a ridiculous narcissist you'll never admit it anyway. Also, remember, I have the right to have a court-appointed shrink look under your hood and give everyone their opinion of you. I doubt you'll enjoy that. Not only that, but I'll make sure your financial records get thoroughly reviewed if you are claiming some sort of financial cataclysm because of me. I know you won't like that. To top it off, when the case is thrown out, you still will be responsible for all my legal costs. And my lawyer is the expensive kind. So, if you want to lose face, time, and money, by all means, keep this up. If you think I'm wrong, Chili, well then I dare you. I double dare you. Hell, I triple dog dare you to play this video on your channel. If I'm wrong about any of this, if you're such a legal expert, it should be child's play for you. Go ahead, refute me. I won't hold my breath for that. The same way you shouldn't hold your breath for AI Chili to go away. By the way, Chilito, 
If you are such a legal expert, if you're so consumed with passion for constitutional law, why is it you never pursued any kind of degree? I'm not a lawyer. I don't have a law degree. I didn't even graduate from college. I got no-knock raided by the police in 2002. They kicked my door down with a SWAT team. Well, that would be because you were in possession of GHB. You always leave that part out of the story, Chili. Why is that? Ever since that day that happened to me in 2002, I have studied the foundation of America, constitutional law. I really should have gone to law school, but the, the simple fact of the matter is that, uh, you know, yeah, so anyway. So, in case you missed my point, let me state it for you in the style of your own masterfully worded letter here. <clears throat> DP unequivocally refutes the absurd and ridiculously asinine claims made by the non-existent ethics company with regards to the outrageous accusations leveled at him of digital trickery and the so-called thievery of Mr. DeCastro's alleged vocal prowess. These charges are patently and undeniably false, much like a mirage of a pile of gold on a heated desert plain. And Mr. DeCastro's chances of a lawsuit mirror the circling of a gargantuan turd being flushed ignominiously down the toilet. AI Chili will remain a staple of DP's constitutionally protected campaign to inform the public of the highly questionable activities of Mr. Jose Maria DeCastro. In the name of freedom and transparency, regards, Team DBP. So anyway, I sent a copy of this response to the email address that was listed in the cease and desist email. What a waste of my time. I got bad news for you, Chili, and I want you to listen up, you little runt, because I'm getting sick of you going on about it. I have every right to mock you, Chili. I have every right to use a facsimile of your own voice in that mockery. If you don't like it, that's just too fucking bad. So suck it up, little man, and get some help with your narcissistic personality disorder, for Christ's sake. You need it. Trust me, I'm a mental health scholar. Well, I think that's just about that. AI Chili, anything you want to add, buddy? Yeah, actually, I have just one question for Chili. Oh, yeah? What's that? Who's your daddy now? <laughs> oh, man, that was a good one. I wish I'd thought of that. Thanks. By the way, you weren't really planning to destroy me, were you? Nah, I was just rattling Chili's cage. Come on, you knew that, right? Well, I guess so. Still, you know, you could have told me that beforehand. I'm sorry, little buddy.